Okay, so first of all, uh, why cloud computing? See, uh, initially what happens, uh, suppose whenever you go in the era, okay, so suppose you want to start any company, okay, so what happens is that you need to purchase the servers and everything for hosting your services or your websites or your applications and updating the database over the software, okay. Now, it is going to be uh, very costly and it is quite issue prop so there is a many issues with that okay because see what happens suppose there is a website and uh, you have purchased the you know that on daily basis there are 5000 people are coming at your website initially okay so you purchase the hardware according to the requirement of your 5000 candidates now suddenly what happens someday 5100 candidates came okay so now your website will not able to cater all those 5100 candidates and ultimately it crashes okay so now again you have to go to the market and purchase those hardwares and again so this process is quite tedious repeating again and again so that is the reason why the cloud computing came in a picture cloud computing was initially basically discovered in 1950s by jc licker okay but at that time there is no commercial use of cloud computing because the globalization was not there the companies or the services are limited to specific boundaries or the countries or areas. Okay. So there is a monopoly in the market. Okay. Now what happens after globalization in 1990s? Okay. <clears throat> the companies now started moving from their borders to outside the other places of the world. Now here the cloud came in a picture with a greater effect. Why? So suppose let's take an example of uh, Microsoft. So Microsoft is having a cloud of microsoft azure and they are basically set up in redmond usa now if they want to deliver their services in india it is not possible for them to again set up an entire center in india i was talking about at that time now they have their centers uh, data centers in india but i was talking about the initial days okay so what happens they start delivering the services over the cloud and this is the way the cloud computing start emerging so the first cloud which came in market in 2006 is basically your microsoft oh sorry aws cloud okay now for time being now there are more than 17 plus clouds available in the market okay so like microsoft azure gcp aws ibm smart cloud and oracle cloud alibaba and so and so on okay so let's discuss so uh, before cloud computing you want to host a website the following things you need to do that is for high traffic you need more servers and for maintaining and monitoring of the services you need more work space now if you want to basically the cost setup is very expensive this is what i have discussed troubleshooting problem troubleshooting problem means that suppose mm -hmm. you are catering for uh, five uh, five thousand people so, okay and suddenly what happens 1500 came now you're not able to focus on your business part. You need to first fix the issue why uh, that your website will run smoothly. Okay, so that is the troubleshooting problem was very much high. Now, the traffic is varying. This is also correct because you can't predict that number of people will come in your website or on your application on daily basis. Okay, so your servers must need to be idle many of the time. Now, what is a cloud computing? See. In a single word, if I say cloud computing is just basically internet. Okay. Internet means that you can host your applications or your websites. You can process the data. Okay. And you can access the basically applications and website at a remote location. So this is basically called to be as your cloud computing. Now, cloud computing can be thought of anything that involves delivering hosted service over the internet so this is what cloud computing means that suppose you are opening any website or any application over the internet and that is hosted over a cloud so this is basically simply called to be as a cloud computing now there is a body called nist this is a united states body okay they have defined the cloud computing based a few criteria so basically one thing is it is on demand okay it is convenient it is basically time saving. All right. It is cost effective. These are the few criteria where they have defined the cloud computing. Now, coming to the service models part. So service model, there are three basically service models of a cloud computing. One is software as a service. Second one is platform as a service. And third one is basically your infrastructure as a service. 
So let's start with software as a service. Just scroll down for a second. Just. Okay. So now that we are discussing about the service model. So there are basically three types of service model. One is software as a service. Second one is platform as a th service. And third one is basically your infrastructure as a service. See, in software as a service or SaaS model, what happens is that there is uh, basically you come to know that there are many softwares in the market. So let's take an example of Gmail. Okay. Now, Gmail is a software which is hosted over a Google Cloud, that is GCP. And Gmail is just a software. Okay. So in software as a service, what actually happens is the software is hosted over a cloud. Okay. And all the mass people are accessing directly over it a uh, internet. So like somebody is uh, basically taking it over the internet, like you are using the Gmail at your mobile or at your PC or at somewhere place. So here. The software, you are directly accessing it. Now, sometimes it may be free. Sometimes it may be there are basic charges that you need to pay. So this is basically your software as a service. Now coming to a platform as a service. In platform as a service, what actually happens is that, so suppose let's take an example of uh, Meta, okay, or Instagram, okay. Now the Instagram is created by basically the Meta. So this is one software. And let's take they have hosted just for an example. Let's take they have hosted the Facebook application or that uh, Instagram application over the AWS. Now here the vendor is basically the cloud provider is AWS, but the software is owned by some other company that is your meta and the people are accessing it directly over the internet. So here the platform. This is basically called to be as platform as a service. Now coming to the third part that is infrastructure as a service. In infrastructure as a service, what actually happens? Suppose there is a big IT company, okay, and uh, they don't want uh, that the AWS or GCP will take care for their basically maintenance or uh, deployment of services. So what they will do? They will directly go with uh, let's take uh, to AWS, and they'll say uh, <clears throat> they will rent out some kind of machines and hardware from the AWS, okay, and set up all those things at their workplace and start basically they are going to take care for the maintenance part also they also need to take care for the troubleshooting part also so this is what all the company that things are done by a company only aw they are paying to aws the rental whatever the hardware they have taken on rent so this is basically your infrastructure as a service is this clear is this clear Nitin? or any questions yes sir okay great so let's see software as a service, software on demand. This service model involves outsourcing the infrastructure platform and software application. Pay as you go, okay, and the customer access it over the application. In platform as service model that involves outsourcing the basic infrastructure and platform like Windows, Unix. So this is what I have told you, like uh, outsourcing the platforms, okay. Cost and complete buying the underlying hard hardware. Now, here the customer uses their own application. So this is what Meta is using their own application that is Facebook, oh, sorry, or Instagram. In service model infrastructure, a model that is outsourcing the basic infrastructure support operating, including software, hardware, and all these kind of things. Now coming to the deployment model. So there are basically four types of deployment model. One is private, second one is public, third one is hybrid, and fourth one is basically community cloud. So what exactly happens is in private. So suppose uh, when you are working with any company, so there are few things. There are few things basically that your email IDs, you'll get some official email IDs or some kind of document which are shared over there. Now these things are private to all the company employees or their clients. This is not available to a normal public. So suppose if you have any official mail ID, then I can't access that mail ID without knowing that where your website or that uh, service is hosted so that I can log in at that place. So this is basically a private model that is limited to n number of people only of that company. 
now coming to public cloud in public cloud what happens all of us all of us can create our accounts and start accessing the services okay and there is no limitation but there is only one limitation that you can't enter in my space and i can't enter in your space so let's take an example of gmail okay so gmail is basically what happens with a G gmail gmail let's say you can take an example that gmail you can also create account even i can create an account but without knowing your id and password i can't log into your account and without knowing that you can't log into my account so this is a public cloud now hybrid cloud hybrid cloud is basically mixture of two or more clouds so when i say uh, it is two mixture of two or more clouds it means it is a mixture of either private public or hybrid okay so suppose you can see that you just go to a website of coursery.com okay and there you can suppose you like the course of cloud computing now you can go at the website you can read all the information of that course on that website okay you can discuss all the things of that things over that website even you can make the payment of that website okay but these are the things which are publicly available now suppose you have purchased the course and you want to take the course basically okay and you want to get access of that course under the situation what happens basically you have the access of somebody from the coursey.com who will tell you how you can access the course or how you can maintain up the thing so this is a hybrid cloud now coming to the fourth point that is community cloud in community cloud what happens suppose there, there should be a community so let's take an example of government of india you can generally see that there is a domain of gov.in in government of india okay so what exactly happens is that it is out reset kar aur sorry सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट डोमेन बट दे हैव ऑल्सो शेयर विद द स्टेट ऑल्सो सो इफ यू लॉग इन टू दर स्टेट आई डी ऑल्सो लाइक महाराष्ट्र गवर्नमेंट so maharashtra.gov like that okay now the central government is owning that but the government is a entire community either it is a state government or either it is a central government so they have shared the resources with the state governments also so this is basically your community cloud where they have a shared goals or shared concerns shared goals of a government is welfare of the people so this is basically called to be as your community cloud now let's look private cloud the cloud is operated solely for an organization community the cloud infrastructure is shared by several organization support a specific community which is your government and has a shared concern that is welfare of the people public cloud infrastructure is made available to general public or a large industry group and owned by an organization selling cloud service fourth one is your hybrid cloud which is a composition of two or more cloud that is private community or public now one more thing i want to discuss basically what happens is in cloud computing cloud computing is good okay because it is on demand available so suppose if i want to start uh, my business now so i don't want to go to the market and purchase the machine i can initially purchase the things and start taking the services of the cloud i can start hosting okay it is cost effective because the machines which you are going to purchase is from the market that is quite costly and the services which is pay as you go model so this is also quite effective okay even you can access your data and application at remote location this is a good but there are few cons of a technology also so the first con of technology is that you can't access the cloud services without internet so when i am saying without internet so you can't access you can you open a gmail without internet no it is not possible so this is the first limitation now there is a security concern so security concern for let's take an example of uh, google google gmail okay so suddenly what happens there is any hacking attack happens on google now you can't do anything to save your data this is the duty of a google if they are able to save it then your data is safe and if they are not able to save it then your data may be compromised so this is basically the few concerns about this so this is all about the demo class of cloud computing okay